Transhumanism is a movement which advocates the use of emerging technologies to enhance and guide human evolution. The movement itself is public relations. It's a marketing campaign. Its job is to acclimate the public to ideas such as implantable microchips. Now if you remember, not too long ago, even the existence of implantable microchips was a crazy idea. I mean, these things were unheard of. This is the realm of conspiracy theory. But now let's take a look at the scientists who are developing these technologies that the transhumanists so lovingly talk about. In 2002, the implant that I had then was positioned in my nervous system here. All right, at this point we've accepted the fact that Dr. Warwick put an implant himself back in 2002. Now let's move on to some more heavy stuff, like the relationship between artificial intelligence machines and humans. Now we all know what happened in the movie Terminator. How do we get around such a problem? They say, well, um, perhaps we could avoid this issue by having human beings themselves become artifacts. In practice, that would mean like adding, you know, adding components to your head, more chips on top of chips sort of thing. Now wait a minute, I didn't even want to get an implantable microchip in the first place. Now we're talking about brain chips. Putting a chip in my actual brain. You can't tell me that people are actually going to want to do this. Uh, a lot of people who do want to upgrade themselves, no question about that. And there'll be commercial interests and political interests supporting those groups. There's a lot of money to be made here, a lot of power. I'm not even satisfied with the power structures that are present in this world right now, let alone giving the power of my brain away to somebody. And did you notice the buzzword he used in there, upgrade? As if you're going to be better if you do this? I mean, imagine you're a parent and your next door neighbor starts going cyborg, right? starts adding components, and then suddenly the person next door is capable of learning a human language in just by, you know, in seconds. And this, of course, is the old marketing trick of snob appeal. But this time, your neighbor hasn't bought a new riding mower. He's added a brain chip to his head, which allows him to think in ways that you can't even imagine. He's become a super intelligent cyborg. At this point, transhumanism tries to sell you on the concept of abandoning humanity altogether. They want you to become what is known as a post-human. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep up in the new society. But I, I think when implants become more acceptable, as they are becoming bit by bit, so such people, the, the humanists that want to stay human, the, the Terrans maybe, as Hugo would call them, uh, they, I, I can't see them ultimately having much power, because at the end of the day, their intellectual capabilities will be so inferior to cyborgs, those that have implants and upgrades, that the cyborgs will be able to outthink the subspecies that still are human. Ah, so humans are a subspecies now. Can anybody see where this is going? Perhaps you remember Adolf Hitler and his concept of the Ubermensch, or the Superman. These guys have a serious god complex. They are sick individuals. But you are even sicker if you choose to follow them. If in the 30s you met somebody, some, say you get some boffin, you know, some big hit, if you like, speaking on the radio in the 30s, saying, uh, pretty soon, five, ten years into the future, it will be possible to build one bomb so powerful that it could wipe out a whole city. Well, most people are <laughs> just laughing. I think the guy's a nutcase. But the nuclear physicists of that time were starting to speculate about the possibility of a chain reaction. Of course, all the simple-minded naysayers didn't even believe that it could be possible. But those brilliant scientists proved by the sheer power of the will that it could be done. And now, of course, we're being forced into the next step of the scientific evolutionary process which ends up with a clash between Terrans, a.k.a. humans, and cyborgs slash AI intelligence machines. They're not, they're not just prepared to see like millions of people die, like in a conventional type war. They're prepared to, see, to risk the whole species dies out, billions of people. So, so that the Terrans can easily justify their actions you know, when push really comes to shove, as, as I see it. To, to, to just wipe them out. 
So, as you can see, Dr. Daguerre isn't too concerned with the complete destruction of humanity. In fact, he seems quite pleased with the idea. And who am I to question his opinion anyway? After all, he is an expert, and we're supposed to listen to experts. Let's hear more of his brilliant ideas and concepts. So imagine uh, a young woman, she's just given birth, and then she, she needs to make the decision. Is she, is she going to have her baby modified? Is she going to turn that baby into a, a cyborg, or effectively an artifact? So say she, say she decides to do that. So this, you know, hypothetically, this grain of sand, in a sense, that's been nanoteched, is uh, inserted into the human brain, that baby's brain, and it integrates itself into the brain. So that baby, in effect, is no longer human. So that woman, in a sense, has killed her baby. Killed, in a sense, the baby's no longer human. It's effectively an artelect. It's an artelect in human disguise. Okay, first hydrogen bombs are now killing babies. This is the kind of expert I should be listening to. Now let's see what Dr. Warwick says about anybody who has the audacity to actually resist this. So the future for an ordinary everyday human, I, I guess there'll be some sort of subspecies, uh, just like we have cows now, um, so we'll have humans in the future. There'll be other creatures, other species, cyborgs, in, intelligent machines, that are the dominant life forms on Earth. And as a cyborg, if a, a human came to see me and it starts making silly noises, a bit like a cow does now. If a cow comes to me and says, moo, 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 I, I'm not going to say, yeah, that's a great idea, I'm going to do what you tell me. So it will be with a human. Then they'll come in and start making these silly noises that we call speech and human language and so on. And I'll have these trivial noises. I'm not going to do those silly things. Why should I? This creature is absolutely stupid in comparison to me. And there you have the transhumanist sales pitch, brought to you, of course, by the experts. And if you didn't know, transhumanism is just the new face of eugenics, which you should look into. All this talk about super intelligence and how great it's going to be to be a cyborg is simply bait. This is an advertisement. Don't believe it for one second. This time, your brain is the product, and how can you possibly put a price on that? The fact of the matter is, you don't get to program the brain chip, so how do you know what it does? The general public hasn't been made aware of the transhumanist movement yet. But it's my contention that the mass marketing of this movement will happen in the near future. Consider this video a forewarning. The transhumanists also push the concept of downloading consciousness into a computer. This makes the concept of the movie The Matrix a reality. I'm not even going to try to explain the reasons why that's a bad idea. Let's just hear what Dr. Warwick has to say about it. Then if a machine is passing down signals that keep you completely happy, then why not be part of the Matrix? I, I really do think uh, Neo in the Matrix trying to destroy things, he's a bit of a party pooper, and life for humans in a Matrix could be really cool.